Welcome to D2C Revolution by Exchange for Media. We are in conversation with Shantru Desh Pandey and Deepak Gupta from the Bombay Shaving Company. Please welcome to the show, guys. Thank you so much, Jaini. It's a pleasure. Okay, so of course, as the everything in the background suggests, you've just recently launched Razorpreneur. What is that in like? Uh, Bombay. Three things. Bombay Shaving Company was born out of the D2C revolution of the 2015 2016 cohort of companies. Okay. So a lot of those companies. were born to sell on a website on e-commerce um they targeted certain consumers they targeted a certain kind of communication a lot of those brands are now 7 8 years old they are moving into shelves they are moving into modern trade they are moving into kirana stores the way the brand sells on a 5 in screen and the way the brand sells in a store are very different so brands evolve the consumer sets evolve the products evolve so our brand is evolving and you can see that in the way we have rebranded from our identity to the positioning to the consumer group number 2 we are launching our razors um razors we always played in the razor category but never in a very systematic way we always had our business coming from outside razors but we felt that shaving is the core of our business and razor is the core of shaving so we cannot not have a razor portfolio so we've launched a sensi range of razors extremely well designed crafted for young indians who feel that they need something more sensitive on their skin something more caring for their skin we felt that it was a large incumbent driven category that needed a challenger brand like us to really come and participate meaningfully third we launched a property called the barber shop which was about entrepreneurship we wanted to combine our business and entrepreneurship in a meaningful content play and the barber shop was was that so razor pranar combines all three new brand razor launches on the barber shop we are calling everyone from india to become who want to become entrepreneurs to learn how to sell sell a razor learn how to become an entrepreneur and then become a razor pranar It's a one-month challenge. The people people who sell the most amount of razors become the best razor owners. They come on the barber shop. There's a lot of cash prize. Uh, we will invest in their companies when they start their companies. So there's a lot of cool things. So that's what razor owners about. Okay. Hopefully, it's successful. Of course, it will be. Of course. Uh, also, it brings me to the question where how important do you think? And I think Deepak, you can also yeah. definitely contribute to this. How important do you think is content creation today for D2Cs for a brand goal for a customer loyalty cohort to begin with? I think it's uh, very important uh, because the the new age consumer actually want to associate with the brand uh, at very different level uh, beyond functions. Especially men as a consumer has always been a uh, very utility driven consumer, right? Uh, but no brand has tried to spoke to speak to these consumers beyond uh, utility because that's what drive the sale for them. But the new age consumers want to associate with the brand. at the basic value level to kind of also what the brand is offering in terms of his self care to the environment uh, and also to kind of fulfill his uh, aspiration uh, uh, to to large extent i think that's where the role of content become important that's why i think barber shop with chantanu uh, i think it's a uh, close to one year old property but it's one of the fastest growing indian podcast we got like more than 1.5 million viewers all organic right and lot of these uh, viewers are asking questions on how, how how i can become entrepreneurs we are seeing lot of trials for the brand are happening through viewership on the barber shop with shantanu so consumers are kind of they, they because they associate now with uh, our ideology uh, the value system but we are kind of uh, working towards in fulfilling their aspirations spreading kind of education around that and now they are coming and also trying the brand right i think that's that's a different way of building the brand and also kind of uh, fulfilling the aspiration for these consumers great makes yeah. sense and to move ahead you see b2c brands are now moving towards a lot of targeted marketing marketing which is measurable which gives them returns and tells them how much their money has made them back uh whereas earlier b2c brands were more focused to just brand building so why do you think brands are moving in that direction and are you also moving in that direction and why wanted that uh yeah so uh, i think the the world is evolving even on that so when we started 7 uh, years back uh, because i think d2c allows you to break the barriers of traditional marketing and distribution you can target consumer one on one and get a instant feedback sales also and then over a period of time as you build a certain uh, cohort of consumers you start kind of finding ways to kind of now being accessible to them at scale Where e-commerce marketplaces come into play, or then over a period of time, offline come into play, right? But I think uh, 
this this performance marketing or one on one marketing allows you to you know do this far more frugally uh, and also launch something faster uh, but i think uh, given now so many brands have are trying to do and target the same consumer it's getting expensive second is i think consumer is also overloaded with lot of targeting clutter, clutter yeah. right that's happening across yeah. the space so that's why i said i think now even the things are move forward the role of and this is something we were discussing the role of our brand engage with the consumer uh, beyond uh, performance marketing beyond discounts beyond i you know making them click on an ad becomes very important right. yeah. okay uh, your on screen presence is about 50% out of which 8% is uh, d2c and the rest is e-commerce so is it the same now uh, is it has that changed and why look i think broadly yes um we are a par, you know half online half offline business certain times of the, of the year certain channels obviously over index you will have sales that happen on e-commerce there's big billion day by flipkart there's yeah. prime day there is pink friday there's so during those days or weeks or months certain channels over index but broadly yeah we are we are a d2c company where d2c is not we, we don't view d2c as a channel if you just look at it as a channel it's not a sizable part of our business mm. uh, but it is a very sizable part of our strategic uh, uh, foundational pillars because that's where the brand is built that's where the consumer is engaged that's where insights are born and then those insights help us build out our other channels as well but like i said when we were rebranding we are now an omni channel business anyone who wants to buy bombay shaving company or bombay needs to be able to get the product in a channel of their choice yeah. you want to buy it in demart we should be in demart you want to buy it in reliance should be in reliance. you want to search for it on amazon we should be on amazon and every channel requires excellence of sales not only availability and access but excellence selling on amazon is a skill selling on demart is a skill it's about relationships it's about assortment it's about merchandising it's about discovery it's about uh, being able to market on you know the through the right media in in those retail environments it's all of that so yeah. our focus is make the product accessible consumer has to have the choice but we have to create excellence in those channels and that's the skill that we have to bring to the table makes sense pretty strong point also brings me to a very fun question now that i just saw the recent new logo i would love to know what, what is that whole cut about which is diagonally so i did see the visual eraser kind of cuts through the company but why just company why not bombay what, what is everyone to ask this question yeah I mean, that's the whole point right so i <laughs> i myself i'm a lot into psychology and i love visual branding psychology of brands So that's a area I focus, and I would love to know why you wanted to cut it through company. Why not shaving or why not? <laughs> so there are two, three things. Right? I think one is it is big, bold. It's challenger. It's outlaw. It's rebellious. Yeah. Right. Um, people. Okay. So this might get into a little bit of a psychological discussion because know. because you have. Yes. But people who want to stand out have, and I say this in a very positive way, have self mutilating tendencies, okay. piercings and tattoos. Right. Yeah. They, they want to stand out. they are outlaws they are rebels like i have tattoos it is it is a mutilating thing. cutting the company is a self mutilating thing to be a challenger and outlaw it shows how much we are willing to give up to actually win to stand out to be someone the consumer identifies with that's what this brand is about also bombay shaving company in verbal conversations between our distributors our teams our offline teams our amazon relationship everywhere We don't call ourselves Bombay Shaving Company anymore. Yeah. It's Bombay Shaving. Yeah. I'm from Bombay Shaving. Shantanu, my friend, is from Bombay Shaving. Deepak is the co-founder of Bombay Shaving. Right? People don't say the whole way. People yeah. like short form everything, right? So these two things. Uh, but I think the brand identity is uh, is one that has to stand. So you will have a lot of consumers who may not also like it, right? Mm-hmm. So, but that's fine. Thank uh, you. Also coming to the logical part of the logo now, I would love to know from you. Uh, I think you said that with the rebranding of this, you want to pre- you want to strengthen your offline presence. Uh, what was on the cards now after you've already rebranded? What so, uh, so I think now brand has kind of reached certain scales, and I think in if you look at urban India, we are probably the number two shaving company in the country. Uh, uh, so we are already present across uh, marketplaces, e-grocery, all the modern trade in the country, right from Demart to Reliance to Metro Cash and Carry to more. So all the modern trade in the country, and also in GT now present across top twenty cities and seventy-five thousand stores, right? Uh, but India is a deep a general trade market uh, still 90% uh, of the category sits in uh, one uh, one 5 to 7 million stores right uh, so kind of building that distribution will be focused standing out on shelf is important because when consumer kind of goes to a store 
you just have three seconds to scan the shelf and pick the brand, right? So uh, the brand has to be kind of visible, visible from a distance. Uh, retailer kind of need to uh, really kind of see the differentiation that like why this brand is there, what it is offering to the consumer, so that he picks it from the shelf. Especially in general stores, consumers don't is not able to kind of go to the category and pick himself, right? The retailer roles become important. So I think it's kind of solving a lot of these things. Our ambition is to go, go to half million stores in next three years uh, and kind of scale the brand uh, uh, far bigger than uh, what we are right now. Okay, yeah. makes sense. And uh, as far as I know, that your core target audience is mainly in the metro cities and tier one. But also, are they in tier two and tier three cities? Uh, sorry, tier three cities. Have you noticed that? I think it's changing, uh, especially post COVID. Uh, we have seen we used to have seventy percent. Consumers from metro and tier one and thirty percent from the lower tier cities, but now it's close to uh, 55, 45, 55, 45 percent consumers now come from lower tier cities, and that reflect in our business also uh, in channels like Flipkart, we do have a lot of lower tier city consumer base have grown significantly in last few years. Our D two C see a lot of traffic coming from these cities. Uh, we have EBOs in uh, lower tier cities, even cities like uh, Indore, Kochi. You see. The business in those EBOs is better than metros, right? So I think there is a consumer in those cities who is aspirational, but maybe don't have access, right? So has income, yeah, has income. So how do we kind of also make the brand available to these consumers become important? Makes sense. And coming to demographics, I think your brand also cuts across many age groups and many demographics. Yeah. Uh, which demographic in your chart does it respond the most to the digital aspect of this brand? Uh, I think. 18 to 35 years is where, and actually, is is the nature of how the online consumer is. I believe, yeah. You you it's will same yeah same. you will find it, but given shaving as a category, actually cut across all the age groups, we still see kind of a uh, lot of consumer in the age group of 40 to 45, especially for our shaving consumables like our shaving foams or creams, because we have micro innovated. We have a shaving foam which is coffee, turmeric, uh, charcoal, aloe vera, right? So the consumers who have been bored of kind of seeing the same old white foam in a can uh, for decades now want to kind of also experiment and kind of have some fun in there uh, the only grooming activity they do in the day <laughs> so we also see a lot of consumers but as a focus we focus on more younger consumers in the age group of uh, 17 to 35 on one side where your brand is focusing a lot on shaving and uh, all related because that's he's right you're right it's all about majority of men do shaving consider as that one main event happening in the month of their lives that today I'm going to shave is going to be a different kind of a day. But uh, when it comes to men makeup, what, what do you think about that? Should you enter into that? Too small. Too small. Um, we are we are we are believers in um, in you know participating in consumer habits that exist and making those habits as pampered and high quality as possible. Hmm. Um, we we, we understand that men's makeup is something that is picking up, at least yeah. for example, under eyes or you know, fine foundational yeah. creams, etc. Not really makeup, but uh, yeah. looking better and up, upkeep of the face, right? <coughs> I don't think we have a right to win in those categories, to be very honest yet. We don't understand the categories yet. We, we are a hygiene, hair removal, personal care brand, right? right. So we, yeah, we, no, it's not about sticking to it, we get it. Yeah. And there's just a lot of depth that we have not achieved yet uh, in those categories for us to kind of leave those and focus on something that we don't understand fully, which is small, which the consumer is very different for. So, five years back, had you asked us this question, we might have been, you know, we are the kind of company that gets attracted to uh, shiny new things. So, it might have been an attractive thing. But today, I think we have to resist the temptation of getting into new things and kind of focus on creating depth in our own categories. And that's something that we have struggled with, to be very honest, uh, but something that we are, you know, at least between Deepak and me, to make sure that the company stays honest too. And because there's just so much depth in, right. in the categories we have, we have you know launched razors and we have foams and creams and we have a women's brand and so on there's enough to do yeah. so for us it will be about that great just to end the conversation one word from each of you about your brand what do you think in one word uh, so the India Edge okay <laughs> one word my goodness you've taken a seven year vision into one word um, I think the easy answer would be challenger or outlaw uh, but personally for me um, I think uh, the one word that comes to mind is uh, is probably legacy. I think this is a generation of the next 30-40 years. We are going to build, we have always built 
services from India for the world. We have built IT from India for the world. We have built yoga. We have built out Ayurveda. We have built out mathematics. But I don't think we have till date at scale built out global brands from India for the world. Right? We have some brands that are global in nature, but not a lot. I think for us, it's about legacy, and our legacy is building a brand from India for the world. That's the exact right moment to end this conversation. Thank you so much for this. It was great. Thank you, Shantanu. Thank you.